And a very good morning to you, Grenada, and the rest of the world. Why is he smiling so much this morning? Well, I'll tell you, it's a gloriously beautiful Monday morning here in the Spice Isle. What a way to begin another week. Yes, sirree. Let's get ready to face any challenge that may come our way this morning. It's going to be a good week. Not just this morning, but... Uh, throughout the rest of the week and throughout the rest of your life. Hey, got a lot to be thankful for. It is the 29th day of the month, July. Yes, sir, we, we're fast approaching the end of the seventh month already of this year. And uh, I think we have a lot to be thankful for. Come on, come on, come on. Things may not always have been perfect, but, uh, yes, we do have a lot to be thankful for. I see that already. T.F. Richards is saying, good morning, family. It's another lovely day in God's universe. Let us rejoice and be glad, sir. You are echoing my sentiments. Yes, sir. Good to see you, T.F. Now, let's begin by taking a look at the rundown, see what's going to be cooking here. We only have about three items this morning, three items, but very potent. So, hang in there. First of all, I have to admit, even though it's such a beautiful morning, we're going to begin on a, a sad note. We're going to talk about the passing of the people's doctor, who is, or who was, the people's doctor. Hang in there for just a minute. You're going to find out. We have the national report for you this morning. And uh, wrapping it up in the last half of the program, you're going to learn reasons why tr a transparent investigation into cell phone gate is so necessary. Yeah, powerful stuff. So hang in there for just a wee bit, and we'll get to that. Okay, promise you, you won't forget it. But right now, let's begin with a statement which was issued by the Grouping of Civil Society Organizations. This came in uh, yesterday, and uh, for those of you who were listening to us yesterday morning, you probably heard uh, the president of the Trade Union Council Andre Lewis and I, and me, discussing that. Here's the statement. It is with deep sadness we have learned of the passing of the people's doctor, Dr. Winston Doc Thomas of the Carinage in St. George's. Dr. Thomas, a well-known and well-loved for his accessibility and dedicated medical service to ordinary citizens, was a patriot who put service before self. Throughout his medical career, he demonstrated that he understood that the opportunity he had been afforded during the period of the revolution, 1979 to 1983, to study medicine in Cuba, courtesy of the government and people of Cuba, was not only about personal success, but also about making Grenada and Grenadian lives better. His service exemplified this understanding, and countless persons have a story to tell about how, doctor, how the doc assisted them in an hour of medical need. The passing of Dr. Winston Thomas is a great loss to Grenada and to the health service in particular. Doc was also a well-known civic voice as a member of various civil society organizations, Friends of the Earth, Grenada Human Rights Organization, National Initiative for Prolific Policy, and the trade union activist. 
He was at the forefront of the debate, discussion, and civic action on many issues touching and concerning national development. Many will recall his prolific interventions and contributions over the last 20 years to the various call and radio programs, thus raising the awareness of the listening public and helping to bring balance to the passionate discussions on many issues which were the subject of these call-in programs. Dr. Thomas is one of the persons who participated in the development of the first civil society organization code of political conduct to guide election campaign in 1999. And he also contributed to the subsequent codes developed for the general elections in 2003, 2008, and 2013. The members and associates of the grouping of civil society organizations extend their condolences to the family, friends, and colleagues of the doc. We will remember him with great affection and gratitude. May he rest in peace. That was the text of a statement issued by the grouping of civil society organizations on the passing of the doc. Let me get back here to social. Ooh, hi guys, good to see you all, good to see you all. Um, John is checking in from Dependency One. Fitzroy Adams is saying he's so glad to be here and we're so glad to have you, Fitzroy. Um, John says it, it sounds like another scandal is hitting the airwaves. Yeah, yeah, I heard a part of it yesterday and uh, yeah. How much more can we take? How much more? Margaret, oh my goodness, Margaret, I'm so happy to see you. Margaret, uh, as you know, was with us during the past week, and she returned to New York yesterday, and already she has found the time to chime in and show us her presence. Good to see you, Mags. Um, John, John is asking here, how is your moany mug? What is John talking about? Many of you who watch, uh, especially Make We Chat, you probably notice that uh, both Beverly and I, sometimes during the program, you see us holding up our mugs, and on the mug it says, Moni! You know where that comes from, right? I'm not going to get into that this morning, but you know where that comes from. And John has been kind enough, so kind, that's John and Carrie Coo to have a mug prepared for Margaret, which she uh, collected during her visit this week. So uh, you're in good company, girl. That moony mug's gonna be a collector's item, I promise you. Peter Bishop saying good morning. And uh, let's see here. T.F. Richards says, during my tenure at the Criminal Investigation Department, I had numerous encounters with Dr. Thomas. Each one was a learning experience. I hasten to say that he didn't work for luxury, but for the love of the profession. He has gone to the great beyond to join other pro bono stalwarts like Kendrick Radix and Ashley Bernadine. Sleep in peace, brother. That's so nice of you, uh, that's so nice of you, TF. You know, let me tell a quick story here. I mentioned this, uh, yesterday I was telling uh, Andre Lewis this. I had known this guy, known, in inverted commas, I had known this guy for many years. Bumped him to him, we always said hello very politely on the street, but I never knew that he was a doctor until, until, not this past New Year's Day, the New Year's Day before. That's the New Year's Day 2018. 
right after midnight, after watching, <clears throat> watching the New Year's celebrations in New York, I apparently had a heart attack. Yeah. Was rushed to the emergency room at the hospital. And there, the person who initially took care of me was Dr. Thomas. Yeah. Obviously, anybody who's having a heart attack here, hmm, kind of worried, eh? This man was so gentle, so kind, so caring. He had me confident. Mr. Grant, everything's going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. That's when I really realized this man is a doctor. And I'll tell you, I will never, ever forget that night. It's about uh, somewhere between 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. And I join everyone else wishing you peace. Someday we'll meet again. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here now. Margaret says, uh, Margaret is telling John here that she is rocking, man. She's happy. She's got her money cup. Sharon is with us saying good morning. And Donna Joseph is saying good morning as well. John Bruno out there in Cary, dependency number two. You're in dependency number two. John's in number one. I thought you guys were both the same. Yeah? Figure it out among yourselves. Um, Donna Joseph says, Grenadians love scandals. The rewards are huge for the upholders. <laughs> okay, Donna. Um, John is saying to uh, Margaret, you're a member of a very exclusive club. They could even become a collector's item. Yeah, that's what I was just suggesting, John. Collector's item. I cherish mine. And, uh, okay. So, let's take our first little break here now. And uh, we'll come back with a national report. You don't know how many hurricanes will be coming this season, so you need to be prepared. At Hubbard's Hardware and Building Supply Department and Food Fair Supermarkets, everything from canned foods, flashlights and batteries, to plywood, tarpaulin, lanterns, roof repair kits, water tanks, etc. are available. For over 90 years, we've helped you prepare for and recover from storms. Hubbard's Hardware, Food Fair Supermarkets and the Grenadian General Insurance, an integral part of your hurricane preparedness plan. Mr. Watts, wait, why are you removing my sign? Sorry, Larry, but you can't put the sign on an electricity pole. That is an accident waiting to happen. Mr. Watts, man, I just finished this new house. I need to put up a sign so that people would know that the apartment is for rent. Why can't I put my sign on the pole? Larry, you should know better. Think about it. Nails, staples, glue and signs make it difficult for linesmen to quickly and safely climb poles and it can delay their response time when there is an emergency. These objects can prevent linesmen responding as quickly as they should in an emergency. You know, I've never thought about those things, but you're absolutely right. On top of that, Larry, your sign was covering the poll identification number. What if someone needed to report a fault? The poll number tells Grenleck exactly where the problem is and allows them to respond faster. Whoa. I really didn't consider all these things, you know. Come, let me help you take this down. Remember, be safe, be smart. No more signs, banners, or posters on electricity poles. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Studying too hard about back-to-school expenses? Co-op Bank is making back-to-school as easy as one, two, three. Enjoy competitive interest rates, affordable monthly payments, Speedy decisions on applications. Come in and apply today. Welcome home. Conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center, 
For over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to W. Ah, there I am. Oh my goodness. There's a note here from Donna. Donna says, My first encounter with Dr. Thomas was at the Princess Alice Hospital where I was a patient. That man was such a gentle, caring soul. He reminded me of Dr. Lawrence Gibbs. Yes, Donna. You know, I think that's one of the things he's going to be remembered for, among others. Um, he was a gentle person. May he rest in peace. Okay, folks, I know you've been waiting, so here comes the National Report. industry contributes millions of dollars to Grenada's economic development. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, July 26th, I am Rakesha St. Louis. Over $233 million in revenue was generated from airlift and $26 million from cruise passengers during the period January to June 2019. These figures were revealed by the Grenada Tourism Authority officials during a press conference Friday to report on their mid-year performance. The GTA says tourism continues to pump millions into the economy so far for 2019, with a 5% growth projection in stayover visitors. In total, $260 million was spent directly in tourism. Product Development and Research Manager Kurl Hostjalik said while the authority is pleased with the increases, there's still a lot of work to be done. We estimate EC 260 million EC dollars in circulation. Now, this is spent directly in, the, in tourism in Grenada, and that does not include the indirect spend in the economy and its trickle-down effect. While this is a significant revenue, the GTA is actively encouraging more spend in the destination with the production of, our, of its new shopping video and of course, looking at packaging and immersive experiential tours. With the increased airlift from, from some of our major airlines, JetBlue, Liat, Caribbean Airlines and American Airlines for the carnival and winter seasons, we project our stay oval arrivals to grow by 5% this year. Positive growth was recorded in the total visitor arrivals of 1% between January and June with 318,559 visitors as compared with 314,916 during the same period in 2018. The stayover market also recorded a 3.81% growth with 82,399 visitors staying at hotels and guest houses. The 2019 growth comes on the heels of a double-digit growth of 528,077 in 2018. Marketing manager Francine Stewart attributes the growth to the increase in airlift and marketing campaigns. We attribute this growth to a number of factors to include increased airlift and a steady and robust combination of sales, marketing and awareness campaigns, both in source markets and locally. Let me end by saying we are focused on the experiences that Pure Grenada has to offer. And hence we will continue on these initiatives and continue to also host a significant number of travel advisors and media which helps us to support all our campaigns and assist us in this exciting growth. 
The U.S. accounts for 45% of the market share in Grenada, the U.K. 17%, and the Canadian market accounts for 12%. Ten groovy artists have been selected from a cast of 25 who performed before the judges at Carnival City on Thursday night. They will challenge reigning three-time groovy monarch Shondell Amede Dash for the crown on Fantastic Friday night, August 9th. The artists are Killer B, Papi Boy, Vaughn, Looney Spark and Electrify, Brother B, Crave, Sheldon Douglas, Terra the Governor, Top Cat and Blazer and Valine. Leslie Modest, Brother B, who was out of competition for the past three years, and the newcomer, Rashid Julian Crave, both from the parish of St. Mark, spoke to GIS about the joy of being on the stage and performing for the fans. The feeling is great. Nothing feels better when your fans give you that embrace. And you can feel it, because when I go on stage, that energy is there. And to be honest, to be honest, Sharian, I lost that fire for two or two to three years and I'm happy to be back because the stage is where I deserve to be. Well, I just, I just wanted to, you know, give the people a real taste of, you know, what the youth can do and, you know, I, I want to be like a, like a, like a, a beacon in the dark because, you know, for youths these days, it's difficult to break into the genres, you know, the big names, I'm not saying no, but, you know, it's hard. So I came with the energy and with the desire to push the youths up to the top. And that's why I came fully suited. People might wonder what he's going to do for the finals, but more is coming, trust me. Soka artists will meet at Progress Park from 8 p.m. on Friday for semi-final action. On Saturday, Junior Calypsonians will meet for their semi-final round of competition at Progress Park, which is the same venue for the Melody Papitet Calypso semi-final on Sunday. This is the National Report. We'll have more news after the break. Every summer, the Spice Island of Grenada is transformed into the Caribbean's biggest party, Spice Man. Coming down to Grenada. Come experience the warmth of our people, trending team fats, the revelry, the pageantry, and why we are the Jab Nation. The kids, our future shines on August 3rd in the Children's Carnival Frolic and the Junior Calypso Show. Seven beauties take set to stage as the Queen of Carnival is crowned on Majestic Thursday, August 8th. The prestigious Soka and Groovy Monarchs are crowned on Carnival Friday night, August 9th. Enjoy the pulsating rhythms of the still pan at the Junior and the Senior panorama on carnival saturday august 10th and real steel august 17th the march gra crowns the calypso monarch on carnival sunday august 11th two days of frolicking in the caribbean sun kicks off on monday morning august 12th with the biggest big, juve big, in the world Followed by pageant and Monday Night Mass. The creativity and splendor of our mass parades on the road Carnival Tuesday, August 13th. Join us in the Jab Nation of Grenada, August 8th to 12th for Spice Mass 2019. Many events, one carnival. Welcome back. The Ministry of Agriculture is trying to resuscitate the citrus industry, which has been severely affected by citrus greening. The devastation caused by the disease meant that the ministry was unable to provide citrus plants to farmers at the start of the plant distribution season for the last two years. Public Relations Officer Karima Lewis reports on the ministry's plans to revitalize the industry. A total of 40,002 plants can be accessed by farmers as the plant distribution season opens. However, citrus trees are not among the available lots, which has been the case since 2017. This is due to the incurable disease, citrus greening, that is threatening the survival of the local citrus cultivation. This disease is spread by an infected insect, which causes affected trees to die within a few years of being infected. The Ministry of Agriculture is raising awareness about the disease and has erected a billboard with the necessary information at the Mirabeau Agricultural Station as it was unveiled at the official opening of the plant distribution season. Chief Pest Management Officer Mr. Thaddeus Peters says plans are in place to start resuming propagation of citrus plants and materials through shade houses at Mirabeau Agricultural Station. That's where we have a map or erected those structures um, because there's a second one um, within the propagating station where we'll be doing or uh, resuming propagation of material um, to supply clean planting material to the farmers. So the process has started and we don't mention that last year so 
you would have seen that is a, a great step forward. And um, it's putting the other um, pieces in place. It will mean a change in the way we produce and, and cultivate citrus in light of the citrus greening disease. It will mean that we'll have to have structures in place to protect those plants because the, the material that will be produced, yes, we'll say it's clean, but they are not resistant. One farmer, Christopher Williams, gives his experience with the disease, while another farmer, Baron Campbell, commends the ministry on the approach being taken to replenish the industry. On the resource plot and the non pareil plot, the trees are dying. Grapefruit and oranges. Strain, there are one or two trees that remain healthy, but the majority are dying. We realize that it is a major problem. But strain enough on the Mount William plot, our uh, citrus there, no problem. We have good uh, results in mandarin, oranges, and grapefruit. I'm very pleased today to see uh, the progress that Maribo has made as the government of Grenada in terms of dealing with this disease that we know has no cure. So how we manage it in going forward and providing new material. What I see here is a new shade house um, and, a new, and the, we were informed that the Ministry of Agriculture is making arrangements to bring in clean material from overseas. This is great news, I think, for farmers and for Grenada generally. Mr. Peters notes that quarantine measures must be implemented with respect to the importation of citrus plants and materials. With regards to citrus, we have um, disease like citrus canker, citrus leprosis virus, citrus trestiza virus. We as individuals, or as traders, or as importers, also need to look you know, at what we bring in and to be aware that other stuff can come in. Because the risk is, as citrus gets scarce, there will always be the risk or the temptation to import more and more. For the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Karima Lewis. Finally, the Traffic Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force has embarked on a journey to assist destitute persons in St. George's. The program for feeding of the destitute was declared open by Minister for Social Development and Housing, Honorable Demo Thomas, on Thursday at the police canteen grounds. The aim is to provide for the less fortunate and those afflicted with mental health issues. This project was initiated by Ms. Thomas, and as she said, I gave her my full support. And we may look at this project as just feeding the less fortunate or what we call the homeless in the city, but I look at this project as a bigger thing. Right? I look at it as a bigger thing. We see the, the less fortunate, the homeless, but they may not um, assist traffic directly, but the impact they may have on the force in general may go a long way. That was ASP Richard Langdon. Minister Thomas says her ministry is committed to moving forward with the Royal Grenada Police Force to ensure that the project will be a success. This function here, the launch of this function here this morning, brings new meaning to community policing and will make a fundamental difference to the people you serve. The Royal Grenada Police Force over the years has shown in so many ways that it is indeed a force for good. It has been said everywhere that for policing to be effective, there must be a strong bond between officers and the people they hope to protect. The initiative builds lives and builds confidence. It lifts everybody up, not just downtrodden, not just those who have fallen on hard times, not just those who are mentally challenged, but the officers who will directly in the program. And I must say I am indeed happy to be here this morning, not only as a Minister of Social Development, and I gave my commitment, but also as someone from the community who had, or even now, has to deal with family members who have mental illness themselves. As part of the program, doctors and nurses provided health checks to individuals who were also clothed and fed. MP for the Tongue of St. George and Minister for Foreign Affairs, Honorable Peter David, who was part of the initiative, says he is honored to serve his constituency. And the question arises is, what are we going to do about the problem of persons who are less fortunate, who find themselves in difficult positions? See, the town of St. George is a unique place. It's a place where people come from, the rural communities. 
in search of employment, in search of a better life. And sometimes some make it and sometimes some don't. And when you don't have a job in the town of St. George, it is not difficult to become homeless. Some people live pay paycheck to paycheck and you see somebody homeless and you figure, ah, how did somebody become homeless? Well, it is not difficult. And there are many stories of people being at the top and falling straight down to the bottom without anybody being anywhere around to catch them. I want to commend the Royal Grenada Police Force, uh, certainly the traffic department and, and the persons in the traffic department who came up with this idea. The RGPF also received support from small businesses within the vicinity. That story just ended the national report for today, Friday, July 26th. Let's recap the top story. Tourism industry contributes millions of dollars to Grenada's economic development. On behalf of everyone here at the Government Information Service who made this newscast possible, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. Alrighty, folks, there you have it. That was uh, Friday's edition of the National Report from the GIS. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of comments here I just want to share with you. Uh, first of all, T.F. Richard says, I would say it again, kudos to the GTA, that's the Grenada Tourism Authority. He says, they are indeed doing what they have to do in terms of marketing. But why, or excuse me, what is the ministry doing to upgrade the local product? Good question, Tia. Um, Margaret Francis says here, what? Christopher Williams looking strong still. <laughs> you noticed? She says she hasn't seen him in years. And then uh, John says, the GIS is over now. Let's get on with the real news. Um, Arthur Langine says, thank you. Fitzroy says, uh, George, it's sad in my heart to know that Kariku Regatta is this coming weekend. And all I'm hearing about is spice mass. Kariku contributes so much to tourism. Shame on you guys. Yeah, I haven't. I've, I received one, one release from uh, the folks at the Karyaku Regatta Committee, which I did publish on the website. Kipling Francis says, we always hear about millions collected, but never know what happens to it. No accountability. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, Chris Davies uh, chimed in here a few minutes ago, and she was extending her condolences to uh, Dr. Thomas's family. Uh, she says, one of the kindest, caring people I have met in Grenada. Chris, thanks for echoing those sentiments. Okay, pilgrims, uh, let me give you a little heads up. Hey, the piece that I'm going to run in just a wee bit, I have to forewarn you. It runs about 35, 36 minutes, okay? So we're going to go a little bit over time. Please bear with us, but it's worth your time to sit and watch this. Let's take a little break and we'll come right back with it. 
Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Studying too hard about back-to-school expenses? Co-op Bank is making back-to-school as easy as one, two, three. Enjoy competitive interest rates, affordable monthly payments, speedy decisions on applications. Come in and apply today. Easy living should be convenient. With Grenick, it is. Dial 237 for any Grenick department or for customer service, streetlight outages, or if it's unsafe to trim a tree near a power line. For streetlights and service issues, please note the poll number. From just about anywhere, you can also check your bill balance and other account information. Just keep your Grenick access number handy. Dial 237 for Grenick. It's that easy. Grenick, energizing our Grenada. Can I have a chicken lunch, please? Large. Real nice today. Mm-mm. I don't want that. Well, you just asked for a chicken lunch. I don't have problem with the lunch. Afraid the container. Why is the problem with it? These styrofoam containers. They don't go for the environment. They shorten me with life. What foolishness are you telling me? So what do you want me to use? Put my food in this. Where you get that? At the food fair, where you could get all biodegradable food boxes and disposable food supplies like cups, plates, anything you could think about. Name it, it's there. And they don't harm the environment. Food fair, taking the lead in cleaning up and protecting the environment. Hey, hey. like you take me advice, you get in your biodegradable food supplies. Hey girl, I supporting who's supporting the environment. That is why I shop in that food fair. Food fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Products distributed by Hubbard's agency, Kirani James Boulevard. Alrighty, folks. Now, let's get down to business here. Both the trade unions and the business community have finally broken their silence on the cell gate issue, cell phone gate issue. While the Conference of Churches continues to be absolutely silent. Public outcry continues to abound with demands for a transparent investigation. And yesterday, we were graced with a visit from the president of the Grenada Trades Union Council, Andre Lewis, who echoed those sentiments. He went to great pains to explain why he saw the need for an independent investigation. Ladies and gentlemen, here now is an excerpt from that session. Listen carefully. You've been paying your bills, your, your phone bills? Yes, I have, and I've been doing so diligently. Yes. Okay, I just don't want to hear Andre Lewis owe $80,000, you know. That, I would kind of take offense to that. Well, and you would be, you would be right. Um, I know I have a duty to pay my phone bill at the end of every month, and I can tell you that many times I go to pay my bill without a bill because uh, I'm aware of around the time of the month that my bill is due. Yeah, so I, I, I do that. But then I'm an individual. Mm -hmm. um, I am not part of a system. And, and therefore, um, in relation to where you are uh, directing this conversation by opening up your question, asking me about my bill. Um, first of all, I want to 
say in the context of everything, um, there ought to be a proper investigation to be carried out. Let's talk about that. Right, I think so. Um, public officers need to be allowed to do their jobs. Yeah. First and foremost, because there ain't no public officer. I hear different talks all over the place, but there ain't no public officer who, if there is something that is taking place that may have political overtones to it, that will intervene because we know what happens to them. And, and that, comes, that comes through our history and our many um, experiences. So rather than allowing us to be speculating, it is important to have a proper investigation to make the following determination. Whether or not this is just a one-off incident from 2016 to 2019, because we have heard about 20, June, April to June, or whether or not it is part of a wider issue as I say, we are here speculating, but I think we can make some informed speculation for one um, of a better word. But the best way to help us address this matter is to have, as I say, an independent um, investigation. Because one finds it difficult to accept. In our discussion, we find it difficult to accept that, and let me see that um, in the case of the individual that is involved, whose name has been banded around, it is quite possible that he has been left to take the fall, and therefore an investigation would reveal this. Because if it is part of a wider system, yes, um, people have different, people, look, in these things, people are given different missions. Now, this one wrecks up corruption, let me make the point, because if it is true, as it appears to be, then the question of whether or not there is a misappropriation of state funds will come into play. And that is why it's important to have an investigation. And therefore, if it is part of a system, the, the individual whose name has been sended around, it may very well reveal that he was part of a cog in a will in which state resources may have been used to carry out party activities. Because it is difficult to appreciate that over a three-month period, one would have an average bill, monthly bill, of close to 20 or over $20,000 for what we call regular use. So it is quite possible, as I said, these are speculations, but, um, and therefore an investigation will be able to address, address that. It, some of the questions that have been asked, whether or not this was used as part of a party machinery to, to allow the functioning of other operatives and therefore their expenses has been covered by the state to do party work. What is of deep concern also related to this? If during April to June, the bill has been so high, if there is any truth that these were political activities, and I'm saying these are speculations, uh, yes? The question that would also arise, what made that bill or other related bills have been around the 2018 period leading to 2018 close to election where there may be more, would have been more political activities. Given the sacrifices that workers have made over the years and continues to make, we cannot afford to have the misappropriation of our funds. It is all well and good and we compliment and I compliment any political operation, organization that can find resources to do its political work. Because that will make a difference between winning or losing. And if you have a manifesto and you want to serve people, a political party, any political organization that is serious about its operations and serious about serving people would find the necessary resources to do what is necessary to make themselves appealing to the public to get into office. But it must not be done at the expense of the state because there's a clear distinction. There ought to be a clear distinction. In our discussion, and evidence may prove us. I hate to interrupt you because I see you're on a roll, Andrea, but sure. you touched on something that I really don't want you to leave unaddressed. You talk about a proper investigation, Andre, and a lot of people out there are calling for that, a lot. Government has announced that they're gonna do an investigation. I saw where the uh, Integrity Commission said that they were trying to determine the veracity of the claims, you know, 
suggesting that they do may be involved. Andre, tell me, please. Would, how comfortable would you feel with the outcome of an investigation conducted by the government? Let me say, um, Mr. Grant. That George, 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 George. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Just part of my brought up seat. Yeah, I know. I Growing know, up I in Ladego, know, my know. queen. Well, yeah. it's part of my brought up seat, too. George. Yes, yes, thanks very much. Well, I guess you would have been more influenced by North America culture. Yes. <laughs> Actually, leave me alone. Yes. Um, without casting any aspersions on anyone's character, and it is not that I would not have confidence in government individuals or government appointee individuals carrying out an investigation. It's not that I would mistrust anyone, but based on what is involved, it would be best for non-governmental persons to be involved. You see, justice must not only be done, but it must also be seen to be done, and therefore perception will be important. Perception will be important. And more, more than that, the fact that, well, I've heard the Prime Minister indicate, and correctly so, I don't think he went to the full extent, though, accepting responsibility. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. He could not have done anything else. Mm -hmm. it, it would not be proper to, to have the, the government involved in selecting or putting together individuals. And this has nothing to do in whether whoever they select. In other words, they may select an individual that we may all agree with, but the fact that that individual may or may not have been selected by them may, may not send the right message. So th it, this is extremely important because this is about trust and confidence. Yeah? It's about trust and confidence. The public officer, I want to address the issue of the public officer. As I know, efforts have been made to try to lay some blame at the public officer's doorstep. We are aware that as we currently speak, there are dozens, if not scores, of public officers who have been marginalized, who, who, who has not been given anything to do. And in a number of cases, it has to do with because they want to stick to what must be done in an orderly and disciplined way. We, we, we know that. We know that. And therefore, is it fair or is it human to expect someone who, who, who may be suspicious of an activity and to put their neck out after taking into account that they have families, etc. But what an investigation may also reveal, hopefully, is whether or not the public officers over the years who were given government cell phones, I'm speaking about public officers who came through the normal public service system, on leaving the service, whether or not they have ended up into instances as what is happening right now. Because you have you've been hearing up for a number of names, and quite a number of them have come through the political route. Yes? And taking into account that there are two and three and probably four different levels in the public service. And people are appointed or given certain responsibilities outside of the norm of the public service based on political um, affiliation. Whether or not some blind eyes may not have been turned. And this I'm saying we can kill the speculation. And that is why when you called me, I said, look, give us some time because this is such a serious national issue. Mm -hmm. We do not just want to jump into making mm. comments. Emotionally. Emotionally. And that is why I just did not walk into here this morning. Mm. But when I didn't hear from you, you had undertaken to call me after our meeting on Thursday. Mm. I didn't hear from you. So I called you on Friday to find out if you called me and you didn't get me. And you said no. And then I told you that I was available. Mm -hmm. But one thing about us, George, our leadership, is that we stick to our words. Mm -hmm. And um, because the most that we have, all that... I have that no one can take away or do anything about except me. It's my integrity. Mm -hmm. And part of that, an important part of that, is our discipline, our commitment to time. Mm -hmm. And had I been running late, I would have called you to let you know that something has happened. But the focus here, the focus here has to be, you see, let, let me tell you what is also of concern. And and, and the central theme is the need for that proper and independent investigation. Because here are some of the speculations. And connections can be made. And I'm not saying that this has happened. 
or the link that they're making. As we speak, we have heard about the issue with Montpio and Glen Elge. <laughs> and I'm not getting involved in the, in the incident at Spice Mass Corporation. I'm addressing now what, if what has been reported is true, that the sum involved in the securing of the rights to the spice mass activities is twelve thousand dollars. It, 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 when you put that in the context of everything that is happening, it is almost impossible to not see the possibility of a pattern developing. Yes, um, one cannot help as leaders. We 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 are obligated to ask ourselves these questions. I don't know, but it is rather strange that for twelve thousand dollars and probably a few bottles of water, that a company, and I do not know if there is any political connection with the company and the party. I wouldn't say this the government because the government ought not to be political in terms of party politics. Ought not to be. Ought not to be. Yes, and I'm saying ought not to be. But it begs into question. And, and I have no doubt in my mind of the competence of the people that are responsible for running the Spice Mass Corporation. I have no doubt about the, com the, the competence. But many times we know things happen not on the basis of competency. But and expediency. The, and the, well, no, I would say more than expediency. Because expediency sometimes may speak about you need right, to achieve right, something right, in a short right, space right, of time. Right, 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 right. So you drop all the rules. It does not have to be expediency. It may be, and I'm not saying it is, it may be that there is something bigger that is happening. In other words, is it $12,000 paid here and the other things elsewhere in terms of the party machinery? An investigation will be able to address that, those sort of things for us. You see, as leaders, we have to address these issues. Yes, very objectively. All right. Uh -huh.
pocket dig deep in our pocket with the different taxes and the different sacrifices the diff the different no increases that have been there the one off over the years there is a duty and and obligation for us to know we need to stop this leakage um, you may very well find that it is not just a leak, it may be a flood. Mm -hmm. Yes? It may not be something that has just been trickling, but it's something that has just come to light. And what else are there? And as a responsible organization, not wanting to just make speculation, we're just asking questions. And we are confident that there is a proper way that at least the nation can be given some level of objective answers. Let me uh, take in a couple of comments here on uh, Facebook. First of all, Rodriguez James says, it is important that notwithstanding the action of a lady for Mount Pure, I am glad it happened or else this atrocity would not have come to light. Precisely. Yeah? Precisely. Um, Ernesto says, uh, can you give us an update on the present situation with the government and the union? I, Ernesto, we're talking something totally different here right now. Come on. Um, Kipling says, an investigation is what's needed, but by who? It's sad to live in a country where there is no trust, no integrity, and no respect for the rule of law, um, where one man is law. Fitzroy says, Mr. Lewis, as leader of a trade union, you guys are the ones to lead, and we will follow. Actions speak louder than words. The power is in our hands. Let me hear you. Well, most definitely, and we have to do everything in an organized way. That is why we are calling for an investigation. Um, I don't want to... Um, answer to every comment, but I think it is important to make the following point. I do not subscribe that there is absolutely no confidence in Grenada. I do not want to subscribe that there is a total breakdown in law and order in Grenada. We have many challenges, I admit. Yes? But we have had working public officers, the vast, vast majority. All that we are asking for, all that we are asking for is to be allowed to do our jobs in a fair manner. Allow us to do our jobs so that we can follow what is expected of us. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and we are not worse than the rest of the world or the region, um, but we must address issues when they occur. And, and what, what the, the Montpio incident, as one of the colleagues, writers on the, um, I think it's um, James, Roger Chris James, mm -hmm. had, had the incident not taken place, then we'd have been none the wiser. Mm -hmm. and, and in some way, in some way, and, and that is why sometimes when incidents happen, it is important to look at what could we learn from this? What has it brought to light? Rather than just focusing on, okay, the lady went into the office, or the guy slammed the door. We have to condemn that. Let me make that. We have to condemn mm -hmm. that, and that can be dealt with at another time. Mm -hmm. But what has been revealed there is that Spice Mass Corporation, in my view, ought to be in a better place going forward. And Grenada as a whole ought to be in a better place going forward, coming out of that, that incident. Rafael Joseph says, Senator, I think you got the perspective on this matter absolutely right. And you know something, uh, Andre? I see, I don't know if you do, but I see some irony in this. You know, we, we keep touting the Fiscal Responsibility Act. I think most recently we heard the act has been blamed for you guys, unions and so on, and their gratuity and their pensions and all that, not getting what's entitled to you guys. And here we have somebody running away with a, 
I believe it's more than $100,000. I know for sure it's $70,000, okay? And this man is still on the job. He's still, he's still doing the propaganda work. Hmm? But I think it is bigger than just one man, George. That's what Yeah, 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 you mentioned that. Yeah, I, I mean, I, in, in other words, and this is why investigation, I think it's sort of, if we, if we keep um, putting our sight on the one individual, I think we'd be missing a bigger picture. I think we'd be missing a bigger picture. Um, you know, I think he has been made to take the fall, as I said, unless something else shows up, because um, I, I think so. Uh, and it's important to, to bear those... Um, and you're absolutely in right, Andre. But let's, let's assume that you're absolutely correct on this. Forget about the individual. It's it's what actually happened, the abuse or misuse sure, sure, of most government definitely. funds. And that's where I'm going. And that is why we have said from day one, and I want to repeat, in principle, the labor movement supports the Fiscal Responsibility Act. L let's address this. The Fiscal Responsibility Act brings some level of discipline within government in terms of how they're spent. But the issue is not spending. The issue is the appropriation of funds. So, and that is why we have argued we have always argued. The government has said, look, your salary increase must not lend itself to a total wage bill of over 9% of GDP. So they have tried to put a cap on us. They have tried to muzzle us in terms of negotiations. Yes? The, the, the rest of government spend, they can use it as they see fit. In other words, yes, there are certain guidelines. There are certain guidelines. I, I want to admit there are certain guidelines, but they are not rigid, and that is why you can find what you may see as um, I don't well for want of a better word I will say politically geared activities because and that would be normal any government that is in office um, there will be certain activities that they will get they will get involved in that is allowable, but that may raise concern as to whether or not it has been invested in the right way because one we have a difficulty with the way the debushing has been done. For instance, um, we think it could be um, used better in terms of um, using the people, train them into some form of um, agriculture. Uh, you know, as it can, better uses can be made there. But we are very happy, let me make the point, we are very happy that people are getting some form of income. And it is still better than just giving a handout, that people go in and line up. But the Fiscal Responsibility Act has been designed in particular to to restrict our ability to negotiate. And, and that is why, that is why, because, <laughs> so, because something else that must come to, to mind. If the Ministry of Finance is the one tasked with the responsibility for, for managing our finances, if the Ministry of Finance is the one, and I think my recollection is that they are tasked with that responsibility, why are these things going undetected? And then it begs into question, and that is why an investigation is necessary. So an investigation will say, look, this did not happen because Mr. A, Mr. B, or Ms. X, or Ms. Y is in charge, and, and, and they allow things to slip. You follow me? We also need to, to be able to address that. Because even from a trade union point of view, because the, the workers in the Ministry of Finance most of them falls under the Public Workers Union. All, um, because you have a number of people who are contract workers, and that's the problem, eh? You have a number of people who are contract workers, etc. The union would like to know that our members are allowed or, or not allowed to function properly. Or the right people are in the right positions, and you are in that position because of your competency or not because of your loyalty or whatever it is. These are the matters. These are unanswered questions. And I do not personally like to go about speculating. And that is why I was very, I told you, let me, let us discuss it. Because one of the worst things that could happen to us as a people mm -hmm. is what I call getting involved in just gossiping, gossiping, gossiping. But this matter is so serious that it allowed these sort of speculations. One thing that we are sure on, the fact that the Prime Minister has admitted that the information that came out 
regarding the, outstand, the, the payment of the phone bills of individuals by the state. So we know that as a fact. So we are not speculating. He has admitted it. The rest, it is allowed for us now as, and we have been, I think we have enough experience, right? what you call circumstantial evidence, um, to be able to make some sort of inferences that is not to far-fetch. And a way that we can finally bring some rest to this matter is by this um, proper. We, we may need to see what the Governor General may do. I mean, I, I don't know. I'm saying Governor General, probably. Uh, I know that there is concern. I, I raised in the Senate um, in 2017 or thereabouts, 2017, 2018, a, the following concern. And uh, to the credit of the government, the leader of government business or, or one of the other senators, they had indicated that they would look into it. But the question of the head of the FIU. Yes? yes. The question of the head of the FIU. <laughs> and this is not about aspersion, but this is about um, mm. perception. This is about perception. Now, had it been you, George, that was at the head of the FIU, and had it been that you were known to be not close to any, any politician, any minister, or so, then if you were to lead an investigation, even if at the end of the day you were to come out and say, look, the government is not at fault, or the individual is not at fault, although it is glaringly clear that the individual benefited, people may have been more prepared to accept that outcome. Yeah. And that is why it is important to ensure that, that we feel a sense that we can see justice being done. I, I, I don't want to say where I want the outcome to be. I have no interest in where the outcome will be. What I want to know is that there is a fair outcome and we take it from there. Let me share something with you that uh, is going to make you scratch your head. I came across a statement on Facebook a couple of days ago, and I'm taking the liberty of reading this. Uh, we know that Scott, uh, Mr. Scott has admitted liability. But two weeks after the incident, the man is just uh, out there, you know, business as usual. I understand the point you made a little while ago. Okay. Somebody wrote on Facebook, and I quote, I saved my hard-earned money in piggy banks for years and recently decided to deposit those savings in my bank account. The amount exceeded $10,000. The FIU investigates me. Where did that money come from? All right? So I'm left to conclude saving money for retirement outside of a financial institution is frowned upon. On the other hand, I change employment status and keep items belonging to my previous employer and he used them for my benefit. No investigation. I make what I hope is not an empty promise and all is cool. Isn't something wrong here? No. And that is why I do not want to just focus on the individual. Um, I expect his organization to do the right thing. Um, if in our organization, even if we were to give someone a mission and it fell out, and that individual, you know, there are just certain changes that you have to make. I, it's difficult to accept the number of individuals that may be responsible for this. Right? And therefore, I don't think it might be fair to just zero in on the, I, 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 would, I would hate to believe that that individual, um, under normal circumstances, would not have known or that he's not paying a bill. He must. But it is not just him. 
And that is why I don't think it is just right to focus on him. And I know I may get into some of my colleagues and others, may, but I like to say things the way I see it within reason. Yeah. Call a spade right? a spade. I like to see the things that, and that's what leadership is about. Yes. Um, there is that issue. It is not just that. It just cannot be. It is not making sense that it is just this one individual. And I'm linking this to the Glen Elge matter, twelve thousand dollars. Where I mean, when when I heard that Glen Elge sponsored and were given exclusive rights, the arguments that some of my my colleagues and I had, and we had different views. Those of us who are arguing, look, this is a national event. And therefore, all, na all, 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 all national, national businesses must, have, must be able to get a piece of the pie. There are those who are arguing that, look, in business, if you purchase the rights, you should have exclusive rights. I remember the comment being made, and I don't want trade unions, comrades, eh, colleagues, that, look, Glenda would, would have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars or thousands of dollars for, for that right, and therefore, what do you expect them to do? No, that argument fell flat once it became known that it was $12,000 and probably some bottles of water. So, uh, so l let, us look at, let us look at the broader picture. Let us look at the broader picture. That's what we are calling for. That's what we are calling for. Because we do not believe that any individual would have been able to carry out an operation like this by themselves. We do not believe that, but prove us wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there you have it. First of all, remember that piece you were just looking at was actually aired initially yesterday. It was a part of yesterday's edition of uh, Sundays with George Grant. Secondly, let me apologize for the millionth time for what happened here this morning. You know, you know, all is not lost. If you go to the GrenadaBroadcast.com website, once the home page comes up, just scroll down a little bit, and you'll see archives, Go to the Sundays with George Grant archive. That program is there in its entirety. And I can guarantee you, without the interruptions that you saw this morning, okay? You don't have, I think the program ran, what, three hours and ten minutes or so. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Just scroll along until you get to the part with Andre. All right. Um, I see that Pele Darbo has joined us, Claire Antoine in Birmingham, Birmingham in the UK. And uh, Ryan Jabon here is saying, uh, heartfelt condolences on the passing of the people's doctor, MD Winston Thomas. Very sadly missed. Cuba does produce some great and compassionate physicians. And the rest of it, yeah, you people were complaining, and quite understandably so, about... Uh, the audio. We do apologize for that again. Um, to, 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 to. Oh, just let me keep scrolling back here, see if there's anything that I've missed. Um, uh -huh. uh, ta -ta 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 -ta. Uh, T.F. Richard says, the master conspirator government is calling for an investigation into itself. It's totally laughable. Well, that's what most of the discussion was about there yesterday. John says, were these monies used to run a particular radio station? Just asking. So says John, Carrie Coop. Um, TF also says, George, I would continue to say that the wrong person is being blamed. The first question to ask is, what was the package given to Sheldon when he was removed from office? It is well known that KCM runs things to suit him. 
And the only reason he is embarrassed is not because of the bill, but it's because the public got to know of this wrongdoing. Okie dokie. Anne-Marie Stewart is also extending condolences to the Thomas family on the passing of Dr. Thomas. She says he was one of her mentors, selfless and dedicated, a compassionate individual. I had the opportunity to work with him. He will be truly missed. All right, pilgrims, I know I've kept you at 16 minutes over time. Sorry about that, but there are things you need to know. And that's what I try to do this morning, get that stuff out to you. Okay, quick break. Come back, wrap it up. Grenlec Community Partnership Initiative. This is not the first time that Grenlec, through the GCPI, has responded positively to TAMCC. And we are always appreciative for the support. TAMCC, like the GCPI, is geared to service the community. As a college, we cannot accomplish our mission of fostering Grenada's development through education without meaningful partnerships from other community members. Grenlec has been a leader in this regard. Grenlec, energizing our community. All right, folks. Here is where we pull the curtain down. But uh, as part of our inspiration this morning, I'm going to give you some words which I hope you'll try to live by. The reading comes to you from the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 6. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing, some have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together with them in prison, and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. Marriage should be honored by all, and the marriage bed kept pure. For God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So, we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 to 6. All righty, folks, thank you so much for joining us on this, the first day of the week, Monday morning, under beautiful sunny skies here in Grenada. Feeling good to be alive this morning. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning at 9.